event for Wash Day Diaries. I am here with the author and illustrator. I don't know what the, the correct term is, artist, illustrator. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we are here to chat about um, this really amazing and beautifully styled graphic novel and you know, just chat a little bit about the contents in it, the process of producing it. And yeah, we're really excited. Um, just some general rules. If you've never been to an event before, um, this is the Astoria Bookshop. If you found us through the internet somehow, some way, um, <laughs> we're in a bookstore in Queens. Um, our rules are pretty simple. Don't be rude. Don't say anything homophobic, racist, transphobic, the general stuff. Um, my rule of thumb is nothing you wouldn't want your boss or mom to see, and that has served me well. Um, other than that, you can ask questions throughout the whole stream, and we will get to them around the last 10 minutes. Um, there's a question and answer thing on the side. It's a little speech bubble with a question mark in it. You can ask your own questions. You can vote on other people's questions if you want something to be higher priority. Um, and then finally, you should buy a copy. Um, not only would you be supporting an independent bookstore, but yes, you would be supporting a gorgeous book um, and two wonderful creators. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with that, I uh, would really <coughs> like to both introduce yourselves. Sure, um, I can start. I'm Jimmy LaRouser. I um, am the writer and um, I write comics. I also publish comics and have a publishing company called Black Chessay Press where we publish comics by and for black and brown women of color and non-binary folks. Um, and that was the very first um, book, Wash Day, the mini Wash Day uh, comic was the very first book we published. So, um, and I um, have worked with Robin a lot, <laughs> which we'll probably talk about too. And then this is Sapphire, who you may see yes! alone. <laughs> Um, um, hi, I'm Robin. Um, I'm the illustrator for Wash Day Diaries um, and Wash Day the Mini. I also did Nubia Real One, illustrator, um, and also have The Saddest Angriest Black Girl in Town published with Black Jesse Press. I'm always working with Jamila. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I went to the Center for Cartoon Studies and now I'm still drawing things. <laughs> So that's it. <laughs> All right. I think I think I actually I will kick you off with a question and then I'll leave you to the rest of the discussion. I'll be back around 750. Um, but I would really love to hear about your creative partnership since it seems like you two have a friendly working relationship outside of this book. Yeah, we're like besties. <laughs> <laughs> it happened because of this book, really. Um, yeah, it was. Um, pretty natural. Um, yeah, I've worked with a lot of folks. I know Robin has too, but uh, we just had a lot of things in common. We just vibed, like our energy vibed really like quickly and easily. We both really like a lot of the same things. So it just ended up that, you know, in between talking about working on the comic itself, like Wash Day, the mini comic, which is the first story in Wash Day, Wash Day Diaries, um, we would just start talking not about comics and stuff and then just we're like yeah you know talking to her on um, whatsapp every day basically <laughs> and um and we work really well together and we um and so um i loved her book um uh, the saddest angriest black girl in town and as a publisher and i knew she was self she was self-publishing it and robin you can tell them how difficult that was and why <laughs> you decided uh, it's a beautiful book. And one of the reasons I was like, oh my God, I have to work with her. Um, but then she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. And she could tell you why and where I had to step in. <laughs> it just took a really long time to make the book. Cause there is like, it has a vellum cover. And I think that's where I was like, all right, well, I was trying to be fancy before and now I'm just really tired of it. Um, cause I would have to like, I would print every copy myself. And at the time when I had moved back to New York, 
I only trusted myself to produce the book. So I would take the train all the way to Vermont to use the like the Center for Cartoon Studies like lab to print it. And sometimes I would like go on the train and like be up all night printing and then go back on the train back to New York. And I wasn't factoring that into the cost. So it was just me like putting this thing out that I really wanted to and I was ready to give up but Jamila swooped in or I was gonna have it digitally only um but thank god for Jamila <laughs> I, the vellum cover I I'd have to like get up and go somewhere to go get it um so I won't do that but it's a really beautiful physical like book and so um I wanted to keep that in print and I love print comics and so I'm like well um could black jose press like print a um a new a version of it with a new cover we can add some like back material of your process and everything and we did a kickstarter for that and that went really well and i'm so glad because i was like we can't we have to let i'm not letting this book just not only like it has to be seen by more people that's like really how i feel about black jose press stuff that i work on and people i work with is like this i feel passionately about what I'm working on and making sure the world sees it because I think it is extremely special. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that, that she uh, trusted me with that. And um, I was just going to say, like, <laughs> I, I trusted you with it. Like, I, after working on Wash Day together, I just feel like we already mm -hmm. have a very, like, similar vision for what it is that we want to make. So knowing that, like, this comic I've created will be printed by someone I trust is the only mm -hmm. reason it still exists. Um, and yeah, well, and I loved working on the mini together. Um, yeah. I remember when she had actually approached me about it, which, and that's when I had just graduated. So I was like, well, I guess now it's time to like make money. <laughs> comics, which, I mean, even now it's still yeah. hard. So uh, we do it for the love. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. I'm sorry, I laughed too hard at that. I, I do love making comics. Um, How much did the Kickstarter raise, by the way? Do you remember the exact number? It was it was either like fifteen something, um thousand dollars, and the goal was like four thousand. Five thousand? Yeah. It was um it was my first Kickstarter, but I felt I've been in like the geek community, comics community for a while. I used to have a blog and started a worldwide geek girl meetup group organization like i've been around so i was like okay i have people who will support me i'm not like you know starting from nowhere and so um and i felt like i'd be organized and capable to be able to like put together a campaign and was like i i could do four thousand, like at least but i did not expect it to you know get as much press that it did um uh, especially because it's so niche like mine my nerves, I was very nervous about creating Wash Day, the mini, from the very beginning. It took me a really long time to write the script because I kept pausing and doubting myself um, because I didn't see anything like it. I was like, is it too boring? Is it too specific? But I'm, I just kept coming back to it because I cared about it. And I was just like, whatever. Like, I thankfully had a job that um, at the time allowed me to be able to Pay an artist in advance because um, that is important and it should always be done <laughs> and um it's not easy like it's making comics especially as a writer isn't um cheap and so and i want to pay them fairly so i was like well you know let let me put this to my passion and, and see what happens and if anything i love it um even if sometimes i personally don't like like i feel self-conscious about the story i know it's going to be beautiful because well, <laughs> illustrated it so um i did put a lot of work into like reaching out to folks for pr but just to get like essence and ebony to write about us where you aren't expecting people who you know write about comics um to feature wash day which was super important to us like me and robin are, i think one of the things that really connects us is creating comics for people who have made this may be their first comic mm -hmm. um and that is what I really, really wanted Wash Day to do. I wanted to show Black girls like, hey, you can see yourself in a comic in very, very specific ways that you 
may not even see herself on TV or in any other, you know, sorts of medium except like, you know, um, insecure girlfriends or those kinds of <laughs> things. Like I wanted that, but in the comics medium because we love comics so much. So um, it proves me wrong, it, you know, that very specific niche was was something that needed, clearly wanted it. They're thirsty. The girls are thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> that was really, uh, really affirming and, and made, mm -hmm. made us feel really good. Um, I remember when you were like starting the Kickstarter and you set the goal of like $4,500 or $5,000. And I was like, it's going to beat that. Like I was like, I had a lot of faith in like the story i think i i was more so like now well now i have to live up to the story i'm gonna have to like draw something that looks really nice because i really enjoyed the story obviously which is why i like signed on um but also i was like this is gonna be my first like work for hire but at the time we we were still like debating whether or not like it would be work for hire we were like gonna actually con consider like a collaboration or not so that was still something I was super new to and um, something I do say a lot is I think Jamila and I get along really well too because we kind of were in the same place comics wise when mm -hmm. we started so together we were both like just sort of getting into the creation of comics um, I would say I mean Jamila was like in the scene for a while uh, with Geek Girl Brunch and stuff, but then like the very specific like creation of comic scene um, is something I think we yeah. kind of started at the same time. But again, <laughs> like I was like that number solo. I know we're gonna like beat that. Like I was like really looking forward to. It, I think it got funded in like a week or something. Like it was, it was like, really honestly. I think it might have been like <laughs> two or three days. Like it was really. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> and anybody who's done a Kickstarter, it's like you just want to get funded and then you can relax. Like you just, you know, and it was very fast. I was very shocked, um, and it just and we were able to do one of our stretch goals is a Spanish edition. So we we have a Spanish edition. I mean, well, um, I have <laughs> uh, copies that I can't sell anymore, <laughs> but they will be donated um, to places. <laughs> Charities, groups, schools, libraries. Can I ask why you can't sell anymore? Part of the, it was part of the contract, basically, because it's the same story that's in Lost Day Diaries, but not, you know, in English. Um, mm -hmm. So the same thing with my mini comic Lost Day, like that, I was selling by itself. It was in black and white originally, but of course now it's going to be in this other thing that another publisher selling. So I don't think it's like something I can't share. I feel like it's. It's like an obvious, I don't think it's a secret. I've been saying it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, but yeah, cool that, that was the agreement like a couple of months before pub date, but basically like, so I had plenty of time. I was selling it for, because we started working on this, what, 2020 wash day diaries. I think I started writing it or mm -hmm. like it was in the, yeah, you know, prime time to start writing a comic. And so, <laughs> So that was that was difficult, but um, the mini had been was up for sale until earlier this year. So um, and we got it translated in Japanese, which was really cool. <laughs> uh, the mini I comic. I was gonna say um, it's really it's really exciting that like you have work in Spanish and that you are, to my knowledge, like an Afro Latina writer and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like I'm Argentinian and like there's a lot of obvious issues mm. in our community about colorism and all this stuff and it's just so exciting to see specifically afro-latina writers working it's great yeah. <laughs> it just makes me really happy <laughs> um okay i'm gonna ask like one more kind of prompting question mm -hmm. and then as you start answering i'm gonna put my video off to the side because i feel like my listening face is super awkward <laughs> <laughs> I do want to ask this out of my own curiosity because um, I am I am a huge comic fan, but not like the superhero kind. I read a lot of Image comics because they're like the only big publisher that does non superhero stuff. Um, and also, I noticed the Deku behind you, and it is very cute. <laughs> <laughs> my son is over there, my baby boy. <laughs> and little Bimo, it's really cute. Um, 
But yeah, I kind of wanted to talk to you. My about little that. Nana con collection. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you both about like your your love for comics and like your influences there and what where that love is coming from, where it's what made it happen, and if there are any like like specific mediums or like like manga or American comics, like superhero stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. But I'm gonna let Robin start. <laughs> <laughs> I was really looking forward to your answer. You know <laughs> my answer, and like it's all I talk about. <laughs> um, uh, okay, I'll I'll go. I'll keep it short, ish. Um, so like I kind of came to comics later, I think, than like I didn't grow up thinking like, oh, I was gonna do comics like forever. My father is a portrait artist. Um, so I really wanted to be a portrait artist. Um, and so I was like really into just capturing someone's face. And um, I feel like so much of that, like just I, I will, like, want to get to know a person. And so much of that can be done through drawing like a portrait. And like what is like that art sort of like gives people an impression of what a person is like based on like their features or what I've like chosen to draw, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I feel like coming to comics was like a way to almost like stretch that out and just be like, which are, which is why I think there are so many like wonderful quiet moments in wash day diaries because you get to know the characters um, from their surroundings and like what they do and what they choose to like wear. And like, what are, again, what are the things they surround themselves with? Like Jamila surrounding herself with all her like cute things in the background. <laughs> um, so I, I think like I ended up coming to comics because of like how you can stretch time, mm. um, which isn't something I really thought about reading comics. I love that. Because yeah. I did read a few superhero comics, but it was just too hard to get into it. I do like superhero things, but it still was just kind of hard for me to like, it was just way too much. And then of course that made me think about like someone who wants to get start reading comics and get into it. Like I can't imagine like jumping in to like a random like Spider-Man issue. Um, and then on top of that, knowing that like me as a black woman, like reading it and also just being like, none of these people look like me and that's that's fine, I'm used to it um, in America. Um, <laughs> so I'm reading this thing, I'm like, I already feel like there is that barrier. And then on top of that, not being able to understand like what's going on really just feels really like ostracizing if that makes sense um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so but ironically enough like the comic that actually made me feel like I'm a part of this is our Archie comics it was just so much more slow and like they introduced like each character in a way that like even though you don't need to have started from the very first Archie comic you like know who each of them are and like what role they play in this like group of friends and like they just get into hijinks like that's the whole point of this comic existing there's no like convoluted storyline it's just and i mean it does get kind of convoluted but it's whatever. not like riverdale <laughs> <laughs> the worst show anyway sorry there are people who i'm like never riverdale. watch it i just hear things about it and i'm like is this a joke <laughs> it's just not archie which mm, but <laughs> moving on um yeah i i really like um the how the characters are all friends in Archie. Um, so that's like a super big influence for me, specifically 50s through the like, I'll say the beginning of the 80s, um, Archie. I think it's pretty solid in like, it's not storytelling, but like it's character development, even though they're all tropes of like, the mean girl, the sporty girl, the like guy, I don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> and I think, that says a, like a lot of my influences that aren't comics related are like, I really love music and I really love um, particularly like dance hall and hip hop and that kind of stuff. And um, there are so many like singers and creators who just kind of do what they want, even though technically it like is completely saturated by the culture. So it like leaves it like technically we are leaving out people who won't necessarily get all the like black references and stuff mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that and I feel like listening and reading these kinds of things is inspirational to me as well um that and like sitcoms again it's just 
friends who do like the same things over and over again, but it's like a little different every time. So you learn a little <clears> bit more <throat> about them every time. Um, and those are my like main influences when it comes to like the work that I make and like the kinds of comics I want to make. Um, and like style wise too, I feel like it, I just prefer things to be simpler shapes. I don't know. I don't need to see like all this muscle definition all the time. <laughs> I mean, that's specific to superhero comics, sure. But I did Nubia and I did that intentionally as well, where I wanted mm -hmm. each panel to like be as clear as possible for people who have never read a comic before. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like my approach, I think. And yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, it's so interesting because although I don't think I've ever maybe read like some Archie while waiting in like line at the grocery store with my mom. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a lot of our other influences are super similar and the fact that like Archie's slice of life technically right I, I, I consider it that <laughs> I was like what else would it be it can't be anything else and we also both started in comics I think a little late I mean maybe me later as far as like years ago because I was it wasn't until as a big reader I loved all the like anime video games sci-fi fantasy all that kind of stuff so it was just really a matter of time before i came to comics um and i started reading in college <laughs> and the first one i read was watchmen <laughs> it's like oh wow uh, this is a lot uh, i liked it but i was like it was it was um i don't know like it's been like 15 years or something like she, I'm 35 so it's really been that long uh <laughs> but I was like wow I didn't know comics could like be this dense and wild and like sometimes really really effing weird um and then that kind of led me into vertigo comics I starting with Watchmen I think led me into reading more adult comics and mature comics um and so I loved reading lots of vertigo from DC so like Sandman, Transmetropolitan, um, uh, what else? There's a few other things that led me into that. And then I started to um, read, oh, I love The Invisibles by Grant Morrison, which is another like, what is this? Like is a, a lot of like, I don't really know what's going on, <laughs> but I'm happy, like, is this really exciting and interesting and weird? Like, I really liked a lot of weird um, comics and then, when, once I started to kind of feel like I had a good sense of like, you know, some certain kinds of like a basis, it wasn't the superhero basis. I did try to read some old superhero, like first class stuff, but it wasn't really doing mm -hmm. it for me, uh, no shade. But when, like, yeah, it just, it, like, it, anyways, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get some shade. Um, <laughs> I started to, um, I really like Batman. So I started to read Batman because it was darker. Uh, I felt like there could be more consequences, but like Robin said, like starting at number one, I'm like, what issue number one? Like, where do I go? Like it was really difficult and confusing as an older reader wanting to be interested in superhero comics. And I like superhero stuff. Like I'll watch all of these Marvel shows, which feels like homework now at this point. Uh, there's just so much, like I need time. <laughs> but um, that's when I found my way to image. Um, I loved, like, I just kind of like dove into image because the books hadn't been long, been around as long. So it was easier to start from a number one, you know, they ended. A lot of them would yeah. end. Um, and so it was easy good. to do that. I love an ending. Um, and uh, and they were more mature. And so I really loved a lot of image stuff. And then actually DC's New 52 is what helped me uh, get into superhero comics again a little bit. So they had um, basically did a whole New 52 series, like restart number ones of like, a bunch of comics. So I started to read a lot more Batman there and Swamp Thing and things like that. Um, but I eventually kind of found myself back to staying with Image. And to be honest, what, um, and then I found myself to indie comics. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk about manga in a second because that's a whole nother situation. <laughs> but 
like I would go to conventions. I love going to conventions. I would cosplay. I was a blogger. So I was blogging about what I was reading. And I Artist Alley was my place. Like, I want to buy stuff from folks. I want to discover new things. But I found it that that was kind of like the only place I could find stuff from artists. And I was like, there's amazing work out here, but it's hard for me to know where to go as far as specific places um, to find work that isn't made by these huge, like, you know, the big two or even, you know, Image and all these other kinds of other publishers. Um, so it, I did spend a lot of time in the RIP Comicsology app, <laughs> just searching under different, um, uh, uh, searching, you know, just scrolling and scrolling and looking at covers and being like, oh, this looks interesting. Like, um, and that was another way for me to find and discover more indie creators. Um, but it wasn't easy. And that's something that I hope can somehow be easier. Um, I think it's improved a lot over the years, uh, just seeing a lot more indie or independent books um, in like Barnes and Nobles and things like that. But that's kind mm -hmm. of like where I float now is just really reading mostly indie comics and manga. Um, and I'm back to reading Saga, <laughs> although I'm behind, <laughs> but then I heard it's on pause again. So honestly, like, <laughs> Who knows? Um, <laughs> but so that was my journey. And then manga happens and that kind of changed my life. Um, Jose manga specifically. Um, I think I think the first manga I actually read was Bakuman, which is a manga about these two teenagers making manga, which is super interesting um, because like I was learning about the industry and Ooh, how toxic and like physically demanding it is. And like this poor teenage boy is like in a hospital, literally like working himself to death. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, but that is legit, like what is going on. But it was, it was a really good shonen. Uh, I live for friendships and um, shonen mm -hmm. and shoujo and a lot of um, manga in general are really big on friendships. And that's, I'm a sucker for that. So then I found my way to Nana by Ayazawa, and that was it. Like, completely obsessed. <laughs> um, so it's a Jose manga, which is a, a comic for adult women. So it's more mature topics, like, you know, romance, a, mature re like relationships with your friends, but dealing with more mature topics. There'll be sex, there'll be nudity. Like, it's for grown folks mostly, you know? Although sometimes it can be in this middle of like shoujo, Jose. But mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is like me and my friends. Like, I'm living for this. I love this story. I love these stories. I love how complex they were. Um, Cause I love shoujo too, but in a very sweet and like, like super duper innocent kind of way. And then I really like Jose because it kind of is a lot more raw and honest about how messy life can be and how messy characters can be. And it just reminded me of a lot of the sitcoms that I liked with like, um, you know, girlfriends and, and, you know, insecure and living single, all those kinds of things that I was like, I want to make comics like this, mm -hmm. but with people that look like me. And for years I had been wanting to be a writer since I was in college and like did, I didn't believe in myself and did everything I could to avoid like not being a writer and being like a writer adjacent. Like mm -hmm. even when I have my blog for years, I didn't consider myself a writer, but I'm like, you're writing like every day. <laughs> so I was like, that was kind of, and I felt, I didn't feel like I could create comics. Like I wasn't not allowed, but it just felt like, like, who do you think you are? Like writing a comic book. But it wasn't until I think Kickstarter, you know, pre-blockchain stuff that they, um, <laughs> I've, a lot of indie comic creators are having a lot of success on Kickstarter. And so that's where I was like, oh, well, I don't have to like pitch to a publisher my book about a girl washing her hair on a Sunday afternoon that barely <laughs> has any dialogue, <laughs> knowing they're going to be like, you know, keep me on red or, you know, left on red. <laughs> like just, I, I just didn't even contemplate going to a publisher. It was not in on my mind at all. I didn't, even now I don't, a lot of my stories, I'm like, who is going to publish this? Who, like, I don't see it out there, but I mean, look at us now. So, um, <laughs> so that's why I decided like, okay, I could do this. Um, 
I could, you know, I have the money to pay the artists. I have the skills to, you know, uh, run a Kickstarter. And I'm seeing a lot of success, especially with people from marginalized communities. And so I was like, I don't have to go the traditional route. And um, that is what also gave me more of a realistic sort of, um, uh, I guess, in, in a reason for me to kind of go for it. Like, okay, I have a means of getting it out there as well too. Like just the marketing of a Kickstarter in general is, helps a lot more than just like doing it by yourself and posting it, you know, and going to shows, I mean, that's what you could do and it's fine, but having a Kickstarter definitely gets you a bigger audience. But anyway, um, so, but my passion for creating these kinds of comics wasn't just for creating the stories that I wanted. It was I wanted to help other people. I wanted just to see more of these comics exist, period, not just my own work. And that passion led me to creating Black Jose Press at the same time, knowing that like, okay, I don't, I want to publish other people's work. I've seen other people do really great things and I know I'm equipped enough to like, you know, I'm not gonna have be on some best sellers list. Like I'm, I'm a little just by myself with my coins doing my best, <laughs> but at least I can just like pour more support and hopefully get the word out and show more people how amazing these works are. And so that's why I started Black Jose Press. Um, but it's really Jose manga. Like I was completely obsessed with, I really love the slow pacing in stories um, a lot. I love quietness. If you didn't tell by the by one of the first watch day story, like I love to work with artists and like think, can I can this be shown versus told? I really like the reader to I like the art to um, give the reader what to kind of go off of versus me specifically telling them with like a thought bubble or with narration um i i i actually which is probably like a good and a bad thing is like i don't like to give too much information or explain too much so like editors will often be like jamila you gotta tell them why she's depressed <laughs> and i'm like do i <laughs> i'm like okay okay because for me like a lot of times the point isn't for example, like why a character is depressed. It is that the character is depressed and and things about that, you know, and I don't want it to get too focused in on the specifics of the why because I want it to be more about the whole experience of this person. That's just like an example. But sometimes I go too far <laughs> with the not explaining. Um, but one thing I do, I do stand strong is, is in my comics and people I work with is making sure that we don't feel that we have to explain things that are cultural, like references and cultural to us. Like I am not gonna write a, in Wash Day Diaries why Kim left the deep conditioner in her hair while she went to the bodega and didn't immediately wash it out. <laughs> I'm not gonna explain that. There'll be like, there could be Spanish in a comic. Mm -hmm. like, there's a comic that I'm working on and publishing um, by Daisy Ruiz called Gordita Built Like This. And there are page, there's a couple pages in Spanish. <laughs> no translation. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't care. Like I truly, I just, I don't like the explanation. A lot of it I think centers on whiteness and I don't, and I want the creators to feel like they're not, they don't have to explain themselves. Just write mm -hmm. for yourself, write for your community. And so I try to really stick to that. Um, and, and I'm drawn to people who, who create stories like that too. Um, and yeah, so Nana, the huge inspiration, Ayazawa, the goat, she, like, I just found out yesterday, there's going to be some news they said coming from her. And so if you don't know, Nana is unfinished. She got sick or and hurt like years ago. And I thought she was going to say it was coming back because she has a exhibit in Japan. Um, and she said, it's, it's not, she's not well enough for it. So I was like, it's all right, you know, you gave us what you gave us. At least, you know, our Hunter Hunter creator is starting to <laughs> write more Hunter <laughs> Hunter. Uh, but um, other people like Yoko Okazaki are huge influences of mine. Um, just like really like C 
seeing women like comic creators be kind of weird and like the way they draw women's bodies and the sort of like it isn't clean like it isn't clean and neat and as far as what I would probably expect in like Western comics. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, I, I live for it. And it's not published a lot in America. So your girl was reading a couple of scans. Uh, don't tell the FBI or whoever, but like I, um, whatever they get printed, I snatch them up and um, I just really want, like there's an audience for it. There's an audience clearly for adult comics like that's mm -hmm. why watch day diaries is i mean it's been out for a day <laughs> and i'm like doing well i don't even know the numbers but i just we've just been getting so much love about it and it makes me so happy um yeah <laughs> yeah and i think especially seeing people who have never read comics before saying like oh my gosh like i love this and that's what that's what our goal was um yeah i feel like i've seen a lot of people we're like, oh, I don't usually read graphic novels, um, but I read this one. And I'm just like, well, thank God. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then I think like, <laughs> what can I recommend them? <laughs> That's not like <laughs> Jose Manga. <laughs> but, um, you know, publishers, holla at us, obviously. I always shout this out. Like, why not? You know, <laughs> Um <laughs> As, one thing actually that's interesting to mention is how we got the graphic novel uh, because as I said like we were just like it was a one and done it was a one shot cute little what 27 pages <laughs> happy with it moved on and then me and Robin got an email from Sahara who was our first editor from um Chronicle wanting it to be proposing for it to be like a longer version and we hit each other up like girl did you see this like is this real like what kind of, is this a scam like but her email is like it was it was like it, we just didn't believe it um it was real then, which is wild and when that happened had you started Nubia yet um, just barely. I feel like it happened. I remember when it happened because I had just finished like putting together the files for our wash day candles. Oh yeah. So we we like we did candles that okay, were wash day girl. themed. Um and I had just made the stickers and I was like, wow, that's it. And that's me closing the book on wash day. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. lasted for so long and now it's done. And then I just remember getting the email and I was like, well. Wash day is never over. Psych! <laughs> a multiverse um, of madness of, of detangling like a, wash day. A week. It was just a week. <laughs> so that means like since 2017, like it's just been like wash day. Yes. And I mean, yeah, I did Nubia. Um, but, no big, you know, that was no, wild. No big deal. Doing, like, <laughs> um, I was doing Nubia, but it was while still wash day things are going on. Um, and uh, I mean, it's that's just to say, like, Wash Day prepared me to do Nubia, and now, like, drawing a, a full length graphic novel then prepared me to do Wash Day Diaries. So, I don't know what's going to happen, like, after this. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe I kind of do, but I can't talk about it. But that's I just feel weird. like it's been very nice working, <laughs> and like, I don't know, I'm just like really proud of us this book is out now even though i uh it was very funny i went to like five different bookstores yesterday and they were nowhere no um but it's fine because uh, a few times i would go up to someone or that's a lie i didn't go up to anyone my friend gabrielle <laughs> went up to everyone <laughs> and would be like do you have it and then they'd say either they say no it's coming or no it's sold out already which i'm like okay so we're getting somewhere, but like seeing it out in the world is like so nice and, or seeing it out in the world, um, getting to sell it at TCAF was a great experience. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, even though like, oh, it's my second graphic novel, I feel like it's even more of like 
our baby or I'm just like oh yeah I was technically like more involved in like the creation of this especially seeing it grow grow up from like a 27 page mini I um <laughs> I I have a question for you that I've always wanted to ask you and I was like well I guess this is the time oh my gosh um, how was it fun coming up with two more characters to like <laughs> add on to it you know it's in so um so I would say this but then I'm a tell you i see emily you asked the question and we're, i'm a we're gonna answer that as far as like a recommendation of something jose like to give um or not just yeah jose like i don't know it mine's will probably end up being a manga but i'll think i'll try to think of a western one uh but you know the reason why wash day diaries is a series of short stories is because wash day was just created in its own bubble. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, initially, before I even started writing the script, my whole plan, I just do too much, obviously, like as my plan was to do this whole series and it's gonna be this wash day series, there's gonna be different genres, sci-fi fantasy, all that kind of stuff. And they're all gonna have these different wash day themes, super cool, still have the little story ideas. But I was like, girl, you have not even written a single comic book yet. Let's like, chill and just do one and just do regular slice of life like you'll be happy if this is the only thing that exists so i created it with nothing really exists like a little bit of stuff existing outside of what you read you know i knew a little mm -hmm. bit about the history with kim and malik and then a little you know more about the characters kim and cookie and their jobs but nothing else because i ain't need to <laughs> like, like what was the point so in given this, I'm very much in the like, ooh, this is gonna be hard to stretch this thing that I didn't intend to be a hundred and whatever pages. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure it didn't feel, the story didn't feel forced. And I was really concerned about that. So I, I love TV. I watch a, lo a lot of television. Um, and I really dislike when a, a, a show or a series or something was intended to be one season or limited, but then it makes a lot of money. So then they keep making them push out these new seasons mm -hmm. and it's not as good. And so I, that's something that I really don't like to do is like, I think people would notice. So I was like, all right, right. how can I make this work? Um, also the fear of like 127 pages, like or not 127 pages, how, how big is our book? It's 192 pages. Oh my gosh. I feel not all of it is comics pages. But that's Still, book we did work on all those pages too, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, what I did was I thought uh, one of the things that was important for me with wash day was showing different hairstyles. So it creating the characters was really interesting because I the other friends because I was just like, all right, I had to kind of like it's really like when I think about like writing, creating stories, like especially from the beginning process and how I describe it, it's like, obviously you're making this up. <laughs> like you're making it up off the top of your head, but it doesn't feel that way. It kind of feels like I'm like uncovering things or I'm like an archeologist and slowly like finding more pieces of the story that, you know, are in my brain that kind of come out or discovering more puzzle pieces that fit like it doesn't feel like like it's it's kind of um I don't know it's it's hard to describe but that's like you know you just think and think and think and all of a mm -hmm. sudden something pops up and it's like that's it you know <laughs> like that's it and it doesn't feel forced and so I just try to think of different types of dynamics in friendships and like type of character types that I wanted to show that I think would really be fun to play off of each other I think of my own friends and mm -hmm. you know, we're so many wild and different personalities and I think it's really fun. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. like what other personalities would play well with, you know, that Kim and Cookie could play well off of, that would show different sides of people that would add to the dynamic of the story. Um, and that would also allow different types of stories to be told um, with Devin and, I don't know, like if spoilery things happen, but like Naveen and, and, and Nisha, who are the two new characters, their stories um, are very reflective of who they are and what, what's going on in their life in that moment. 
Um, and so, and those are two story ideas and themes that I was very passionate about creating in general. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to do a group chat type story, period. And so I'm like, well, it's going to be a Wash Day Diaries. <laughs> it's going to win an award. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to talk about depression and, and explore depression because your girl got it and anxiety. And so it's and, and the stigma of it in the Black community and medication and therapy and all that stuff. So I wanted to show these kinds of things, um, these slices, their, their own little slices of life, but also how they're interconnected as mm -hmm. friends and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was, I don't know, interesting. Like it's, I don't know, I just kind of, they kind of I just remember you like describing them to me and I was like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just kind of make them like different, but I don't know. All my friends are very different and it's. That's it it's too. Cool. Like, I feel like just thinking about your own friends is so helpful mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. creating characters, but especially like if, the whole book is about like friendships, then why not think about your own friends? Because oh I remember gosh. when you yes. <laughs> described Nisha and at the time she didn't really have a name because you let me name them, which is very nice. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> name these people. <laughs> <laughs> and I just ended up like their character designs are based on my friends. So I'm just like, it's like a mix of our friends make up mm -hmm. this book, which I think is really cute. Yeah, I think it's so beautiful. <laughs> and I think our friendship too, like there's so much like layers of friendship involved, like real friendships involved in the creation of the story. And I think that's why it shows like our own friends that we have our friendship that has grown over mm -hmm. the course of, you know, meeting in 2017. Um, I love friendships and sisterhoods. Like, Without them, Lord knows, I'm, I'm, you know, they, they, it's, they sustain me, you know, and yeah. I wanted to honor that. Um, but I do want to um, not forget Emily's question. So um, if I had to pick one. Um, so I would say I haven't finished reading um, all of Snot Girl that is out from Image, but I think Snot Girl is a pretty good like Jose adult-ish for like women comic to read uh Brian O'Malley and uh I'm forgetting the artist's name I'm sorry um and then as far as um Jose manga goes Nana is the goat but Ayazawa also created Paradise Kiss which is finished and also an anime and Nana is also an anime um but if you like some like interesting and weird things that say Kyoko Okazaki's Helter Skelter um, mm -hmm. can kind of really like open your door into a different type of um, different types of mangaka that kind of the illustration is a lot different a lot more different and interesting so I could have a whole episode about <laughs> that we have literally done before so. um you sound like us in the bookstore when we're trying <laughs> like I'm like can you recommend me a thriller? And we're like, ah, oh, let me think. And then like 10 minutes later, they have 50 books. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like, it's a problem. I, but I love them so much. Um, Robin, do you have a, a go-to recommendation? Um, I don't know if it's Jose, <laughs> um, but I really love anything created by Ryan Heshka. So like Mean Girls Club, they just made a longer form version of it. Like I think it's funny because I think it started as a mini, and then he was he was then like had to make a gra like a graphic novel. So you know, in the Wash Day Diaries boat. Um, but I really love the mini. Um, and Pleasure Planet is really good mm. by him. Other things that I've read recently, I just read Love Man, uh, which is put out by Perfectly Acceptable Press. And it's one of the funniest things I've ever read. I got it from TCAP. They were like so close to our table. And I was like eyeing that book because they had a vellum cover. So I was just like, huh, what kind of vellum are they using? <laughs> <laughs> and it was very nice vellum. So maybe I'll hit them up about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <I'll have> CC me. <laughs> <laughs> Two other ones that I wanted to mention quick. Um, a Map to the Sun by Sloan. Leong is really good. It takes place in high school, but mature stories 
the art is like the colors like listen um and then another one that takes place in high school but pretty mature as well is laura dean he's breaking up with me by mariko tamake and rosemary valero o'connell so those are like favorites of mine um really great books definitely would recommend and yeah oh and i just read those. um stone fruit by lee lai which is really good. oh i've been yeah i've never read that it's okay, really good, good. good. Yeah, I just like lent it to a friend and they were just like so emotionally like Oh my gosh. <laughs> they just they couldn't finish it in one city. <laughs> oh gosh. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> um I have either of you read Rat Queens, because that is like the one. Yes. Thing. Oh my god. Uh-huh. I was obsessed with Rat Queens for a while, then they had a little drama. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> I don't remember. It's and not that kind of publication history. Listen. Um, uh, <laughs> that soured things for me, but Rat Queens was great. Rat Queens is the beginning of Rat. I mean, I don't know what happened after that whole thing. I kind of just, I think just they paused like, the comic and got new creators, maybe, but yeah, Rat Queens is, is awesome. Just to it, see like fantasy in a comic book and, and have like a group of four women who are all uh, different but play off each other very well is very like, um not although it's written by a dude but it doesn't seem like it yeah <laughs> like i was like it doesn't it doesn't have the male gaze g-a-y-z i always feel like i'm saying like <laughs> i probably must just finished like but um you can always tell and that felt like i don't know it, it, it didn't feel like it was coming from that so that was nice yeah i get that mm -hmm. um mentioned artist alley before do you either mm -hmm. of you conventions as, do what as, do either of you ever go to conventions as like people with booths not like as as a <laughs> as a con goer but mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah we actually just did toronto comics and arts festival in obviously toronto um <laughs> <laughs> together and we're able to sell wasi diaries a little bit earlier so that was really fun um, and exciting to see people. And you know what, TCAF is interesting because TCAF has a very special relationship with Wash Day. My friend um, Zainab, who ran Shortbox, a publisher, she, I went to TCAF the very first time to help her run her booth and Wash Day was in production and I had a little um, like mini preview flyer that she let me put on her table that people would pick up and stuff. That, and it was like about the Kickstarter coming and all that. The following year, I was there selling the actual mini comic and people were like, oh, I picked up your flyer. And then this year, uh, or this this year was, um, I, it had been a couple of years since I had been to TCAF and COVID and all that stuff. But there were people who were like, I literally had your flyer. I had bought your, the mini here. And now I'm buying Wash Day Diaries <laughs> here. Like it is, it's, it's a really cool, um, I really love how it's a part of the story and how people have been a part of, like, we've had so much support about Watch Days from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still like, really? Like, she doesn't talk a lot. Like, you're okay with that? <laughs> I love it. I love telling those kinds of stories. But um, so it's just reaffirming. It's, 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 it's just made us really, really happy to interact with people. It is very exhausting, though. Um, so. I will be at San Diego Comic Con at the Carnival booth, um, and on some panels. Yeah, um, I'm so excited! But I won't be watching myself. I won't be there. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm I don't there. fly. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you can you'll see me there at Chronicles mm -hmm. booth, but I won't be selling Black Jose stuff. Um, it's a lot of work. It's hard on on the body. Um, yeah, I'll be at SPX this year though, which is the Small yes. Press Expo in Bethesda, Maryland. Um, maybe yes. Jamila will be there. I'm hoping Jamila is there. <laughs> Listen, you gotta ask my body. I'll let, you know. <laughs> I'll let you know. Like, I have like chronic pain issues and TCAF is like, girl, I don't know if you can do this anymore. Mm. So we'll see, but I would love to. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I think that's on our, our schedule for this, this year, yeah. as far um, as in-person so events, yeah. Like integral to like, Art, being an artist like I have not sure been con in years but like that love and loyalty of someone who sees you once a year I know 
it's so sweet. It's like, I remember you. And then meeting like mm-hmm. all your other comics friends that you only talk to on the internet forever, you know, meeting them for the first time, putting a cartoon mm-hmm. avatar to a face, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, a it's, it's really, yeah. a little harder with masks now, I will say. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I always love going to conventions. Like they, although they are tiring as like, you know, somebody behind the booth, they, I always feel like super inspired the cre- creating more comics and really mm-hmm. rejuvenated once my body has recovered. <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, yes, people like they're into it. And, you know, we'll get that on the internet, but seeing it in person, it just feels, it feels like realer and it's just, it's really nice. Yeah. All right. Last thing, um, you guys have to plug yourselves now. Uh, allowed to be shy about it authors and and artists are always like oh no I don't you know (laughs) well I want you to be aggressive (laughs) I'll be super aggressive but you start first Robin I want links I want handles (laughs) oh god um oh I can type them in the chat right I can I can help folks right I'll start typing stuff in that'd be great Um, I will say Press the buy your copy here button. I mean, support a story bookshop. Thank you so much for like hosting this event. Yes, um, yes, thank you. Uh, let me see. Oh, everything is at Robro Small. I'll type it out. Um, or Jamila, are you typing? I sure okay. am. <laughs> it's on Twitter. It's on Instagram.com. Robo Small <laughs> everywhere. Um, I'm yeah. I'm Robin Smith. We all need. Thank you so much. Like we always always hyping each other up. Like that's just what it is. Um, It's easier. It is. So mine's is simple. Like it's my name everywhere. My dot com is like everything in general, and then Black Chelsea Press is Black Chelsea Comics specifically that we publish. Um, And so. We have Instagram, Twitter for both of those. I do have a newsletter um, where I like talk about what's going on. Um, sometimes share some sneak peeks, discount codes, um, and kind of get into some of like the meteor like details of creating some of the work. And um, it is it goes out whenever I have something to say and whenever I have time because <laughs> I wanted to go out yesterday for all these reasons, but it. It didn't happen, <laughs> but yeah, um, well, that's a another one. So I think this was super wonderful. I will try to get the recording to you soon, so you can have it oh, for cool. purposes if you'd like it. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone for coming and supporting an independent bookstore and two really wonderful creators. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>